Welcome to Libraries Today. This program is intended to recognize and highlight the unexpected ways local libraries serve their communities today. I'm your host, Stan Howe. From the outside looking in, libraries are a simple place. You walk through the doors, browse through the stacks, pick out a book, maybe do some work on one of the library's computers, check out, and head home. But behind the scenes, there's a lot of work going on to prepare a library for the day's visits. Today, we drop by the Morgantown Public Library and see how it all works. The first library in Monongalia County was established in Morgantown in 1926 by the Morgantown Women's Club. It spent nearly 40 years in the city's municipal building before moving to its current facility in 1964. And branch libraries in Blacksville, Arnettsville, the Cheat area, and the Clinton District were eventually founded. Today, the Morgantown Public Library System serves over 100,000 residents. Let's take a peek behind the bookshelf and learn about the hard work that makes the Morgantown Public Library a destination site in Monongalia County. It's a day in the life of a library in Morgantown, West Virginia. Welcome to Morgantown, West Virginia, the home of the Morgantown Public Library. With me now is Library Director Sarah Palfrey. Sarah, thanks for being with us. Thanks for coming. So describe for me a typical day here at the Morgantown Public Library. Oh, well, I think a typical day here is like a typical day at any library where it's never typical. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, there's always a variety of things that happen uh, out on the floor and behind the scenes. Um, we've got, you know, I don't know, almost 230 patrons walk through the door a year, so a certain number of them come in every day. Um, mm -hmm. Kids through seniors. Um, we make new library cards, we check books in and out, we help people find what they're looking for, and the people downstairs keep all the gears in motion. <laughs> you know, you make it sound so simple, but obviously <laughs> there are lots of things behind the scenes that are going on that the typical patron will never see. Right. Like today is a Tuesday mm -hmm. that you happen to be here, so it's New Book Tuesday. Um, on Tuesdays, we uh, try and get out the brand new movies and the brand new books to all the branches and out on the floor so patrons can check them out as soon as they are available. Also on Tuesdays, you have a book sale. We do have a book sale. We are so fortunate to have a... Uh, Friends of the Library that runs a book sale every Tuesday and two Saturdays a month. Um, it's made up of all the books that get donated. I mean, every library employee anywhere can sympathize with the number mm -hmm. of donated books that walk through the door on a daily basis. Um, so we get a lot of them, and they do a very good job of sorting them and uh, getting them up on the shelves. Uh, they run it like a real bookstore. So you can browse. It's actually the only used bookstore in Morgantown right now. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we're pretty proud of that. And the work that they do, they do does a lot to help support the library as far as improving facilities and equipment and furniture and things like that. It's also a little unusual from a library's perspective that it's a full-time regular book sale. I mean, most yeah. libraries typically would have a day or two during the year to, to mm. sell used books. Yeah, it's a dedicated space um, that they run, you know, very dedicated volunteers that come in every Tuesday and keep it running. Um, the first Saturday of the month, I think, is one of our special price ones where everything is half price. Um, and some of our branches have book sales, too, that go on regularly, but uh, they'll have, like, big, the big, more traditional sort of cover all the tables for a, a week or two to try and uh, move them all at once. What do you see as your library's role in the community? Uh, I think our library plays the role as a, as a connector. Um, we, you know, we connect people to books that they're readers to their books. We connect people to each other through our programs. Uh, we connect students, regardless of age, you know, lifetime learners through elementary students, homeschoolers, to the information that they're looking for. Um, and being a connector like that really helps to strengthen our community as the whole. 
in your community is a little different than the typical library community in West Virginia due to West Virginia University being right here. It is. You cannot ignore that 800-pound gorilla <laughs> when you're in Morgantown. Uh, Morgantown is definitely a college town um, with all the good and bad that comes with that. And, and it really is. Uh, I mean, you can, you can see it as a glass glass half full or glass half empty. I love it. Uh, it's vibrant. Um, there's always something going on. So we do have a very unique community here. It has an ebb and flow to it that goes along with the, um, the college year, you know, which, which is a lot of fun because Morgantown as a whole, the town in the summer, you know, gets a little slower, a little lazier. It's definitely not <laughs> as many sirens. <laughs> But the library, of course, in the summer, we all know, is our busiest time of the year. So we are like the happening place in the <laughs> Morgantown in the summer. So that's kind of fun. And, um, and I've really enjoyed that. Do you get a lot of uh, university students uh, here? Some, um, not a huge amount. Um, we have a pretty good um, and growing comic book and manga collection. And so that draws some in. Um, but it's sometimes just looking for a place to study away from student, from other students. We'll see people here um, or meeting. We tend to attract more of the older students, like the, the grad student programs, med students, law students, their families um, that are, again, looking for that connection when they move to a new town and they know they're going to be here for three years and, um, and want to meet some other families and things like that. So why don't you describe for me the, the kinds of services that you provide the Morgantown community? Um, well, I'm going to get out my cheat sheet because we do a lot of programs here. Uh, I love how active our programming is. I think, you know, myself, that's always been one of my favorite things and one of my strengths as a librarian. And I walked into an already really vibrant um, programming atmosphere here. We have a lot of great traditional uh, story time programs, but then we also have a Read Baby Read program for babies, and this has been hugely popular. Um, I mean, sometimes there's close to 20 kids in there. Like, you just can't stand the cuteness in that room. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also have a wonderful Read to Rover program in the evenings, uh, which is nice to be able to offer our programming at a variety of times during the day to reach different groups. Um, so elementary age kids can sign up to read to a dog for 15 minutes. Dogs don't judge you when you <laughs> mispronounce words or, or criticize your reading choices. <laughs> so they make excellent listeners and um, they hang out on the carpet right here in the kids section and, um, and just chill out and read. Um, we're also very fortunate to have some great partnerships that in Morgantown, um, one of which is a grant that we get every year from the uh, Shelley Marshall Foundation, which supports some of our really big events that we have throughout the year. Um, those are big Saturday, like two, three hour long programs where the kids just take over the whole library and, you know, 60 to 100 kids and their families all come in and make crafts and do different um, literacy activities and things like that. Uh, we're, we've got one coming up this month with um, Spark, which is a children's museum. Uh, they're coming to help us do a Frankenstein program. And because we're doing Frankenstein, the WVU's uh, neuroscience student organization is also coming to help. <laughs> <laughs> they may be bringing brains. So, you know, again, advantages of a <laughs> university community. Um, so last year, we've recently become a levy-funded library. And one of the things we've been able to add in because of that levy funding is a teen specialist. So this is a new position for us, and she is knocking it out of the park. Um, Crystal has done all kinds of programming. She really only started late last spring, and we had Dungeons and Dragons boot camp and now an after-school uh, meetup that they do a couple times a month. Um, the Bad Art Improvement Society is one of my favorites. Um, and they've got an ongoing teen and tween book clubs and teen movie nights that have been really popular. Maybe because there's free pizza. But, <laughs> there you, you know. Go. 
Um, and then we do a variety of adult programming too, book clubs and uh, authors. Um, the All Center is starting to do a lot more adult programming too, uh, which has been pretty exciting to see. We've had some different music groups come in as well, so there's there's a lot of programming that goes on in, in that world. Um, but we also have some different uh, literacy services available in the library where the Mon and Preston County Literacy Volunteers have a space in the library to run their ESL and um, other uh, basic literacy classes, which we're glad to be able to be partners in that effort as well. For you personally, I know this was a big transition. You took over this library 2017, mm -hmm. uh, coming from a, a smaller library yes. in Somersville. Yeah moving to one of the largest libraries in the state of West Virginia with four branches, a lot more employees. Uh, talk to me about, <laughs> about that transition. Uh, it's definitely been challenging, um, but exciting. The, uh, it is, I'm always a do-it-myself kind of a person, and so that's been tough to, uh, personally, to make that switch to that there's, always a team available you just have to make use of them so um, it's been it's been exciting to see thing how thing how to scale things larger and smaller um, you know the, some of the branches operate on a very similar scale to what Summersville did mm -hmm. and I think that has helped make me more accept, accessible to them because I've been in their shoes <laughs> <laughs> and so I get it like when they say well, we have to do all of these things. I'm like, I know, I did it. Here's how we can move forward together. And so that's been, um, I think has helped make the system stronger as a whole instead, um, and a little bit more cohesive. So, it, what, what are the advantages of, you, you can now see it from both sides, what are the advantages of having a system as opposed to a standalone single library? Um, there's definitely more strengths to draw from, you know, which in a system, I mean, there's just more people with more abilities. Um, and once you've sort of figured something out, you can replicate it, which is mm -hmm. great because, you know, it's the figuring it out time that takes <laughs> the longest. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with learning lessons as long as you're not learning the same one over and over right. again. Uh, so we don't have to do that. We don't have to learn all those lessons over and over again. We can share those ideas and, um, and implement them. But, but then we also get to, you know, be unique too. And so if someone comes to this library and says, I'm looking, you know, for this type of experience, we can say, well, this is where, you know, you'll find that or, um, and so that's been, it's nice to have that many more resources and to have the, be able to focus on different things in different places and not be so spread so thin. How often do you get out to the branches and and make visits? Well, not as often as I would like to. <laughs> They're so close yet so far away, all at the same time. Um, I do, we have someone that goes, we meet up on Tuesdays. Tuesday is our magic day of the week for everything. <laughs> um, sometimes we meet partway between branches to exchange materials uh, through holds and interlibrary loans and that sort of thing and new books. Other times, the branch supervisors come into the main library. Um, we do have a monthly meeting, so I do at least meet up with the branch supervisors at least once a month. And I try and make sure I get out to a branch once a month, but maybe not all four of them every month. So. How many employees does it take to make a library system like this run smoothly? Well, we have 44. I'm not sure that's that the magic enough? number. Is that enough? <laughs> Uh, it depends. Some days it seems like too many, and other days it seems like not enough. Um, I did come from a yeah. I did go from a staff of four to forty four. So it's a a bit of a, a jump. Um, I think the libraries are always transitioning, but I think right now we're in a, a a particularly heightened transition mode, and staffing is one of those things that we kind of, when given the opportunity through you know, either retirements or, um, or people moving on to other opportunities that to reevaluate how we work 
is um, has taken up a lot of my last year. <laughs> <laughs> I think I went six years without hiring anybody in Somersville, and we hire very regularly here. As certain positions just turn over regular pretty quickly because um, because it's just the nature of the position. But we also have had a number of people retire in the last year, and so we're always looking at how to better use use people in the system to meet their professional goals and to still get the job done and then also look to see where the gaps are and where we can fill them. So I think our, well, I think we'll probably hover around that 44 for a while, 42, 44 in there. Um, but I don't know that it's, I don't know that it, there's a magic number to make it run smoothly. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, we're going to take a tour of the Morgantown Public Library. We'll be right back after this. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. This is a serious problem, but one we can solve. Visit feedingamerica.org to help. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Welcome back to Libraries Today, where we're paying a visit to the Morgantown Public Library. With me to give a tour of the library is Library Director Sarah Palfrey. Hi. So Sarah, we started our interview in this area with this great castle behind us. What area are we in? This is the children's area. Um, this is where we keep all the picture books and our new chapter books. Uh, the castle, as you mentioned, this is um, a ceramic storybook castle that was commissioned by the Morgantown Service League and has been in the library almost since day one. And it is beloved by everyone. There's all kinds of stories hidden throughout the castle. It's a great, um, it's a first stop for a lot of people. <laughs> Let's see what else we have. Sure. Okay. So down this way we have the rest of our children's collection, uh, chapter books and children's nonfiction. And our picture books spill out all the way to this side because they are <laughs> by far the most heavily circulating collections in the library. Um, no one can get enough picture books. <laughs> And over this area? Um, adult fiction and paperbacks take up the rest of the majority of the <laughs> first floor. Have some CDs, I see. Uh, music CDs are still very popular, even though we have a number mm -hmm. of downloadable um, mm -hmm. options. And then we've got our, all the rest of our media in the same area, DVDs and audiobooks. Okay. Of course, here we are at the front desk. We have a lot of folks already here. Yes. Um, so one of the things that... <laughs> I wanted to ask you about, you know, behind the scenes, a lot of things go on. We're seeing some behind the scenes stuff here uh, as well. Circulation in action. Circulation in action. <laughs> um, so there's ordering books, handling paperwork, making sure the lights stay on, all of that. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell me about the kind of mundane things you have to deal with. <laughs> uh, yes, paperwork, lots and lots of paperwork. Um, not only do I run this library and the system, but then we're also a service center library. Right. So we have two affiliates in Preston County that we do some of the administrative support for as well. Um, and luckily we've got a great team. Uh, we do keep them locked in the basement, but <laughs> you know, that's where paperwork is done best, I guess. <laughs> we may get a chance to see them before the day is out. That sounds like a good idea. <laughs> Let's go take a look at the second floor. Sure. Here we are on the second floor, so what do we have up here? Uh, well, we have our official reference desk up here, um, currently being staffed by Crystal, who is our teen specialist. <laughs> Hi, Crystal. Uh, filling in at the reference desk today. Um, we also have all our public computers up on the, the second floor. This, How many do you have? Um, Ten. We also do drop-in tech help up mm -hmm. here, so if you're having trouble with your own device, you can come in and we'll try and help you get connected, get back up and running, that sort of thing. Um, so second floor is also where we house our large print collection. Uh, mm -hmm. As you may have noticed downstairs, we're a little tight for space, mm -hmm. um, as any good older <laughs> library building is. So large print moved up here about two years ago, and then it continues to house our shrinking reference collection and our adult nonfiction collection. Um, we also use this space up here for programming. Uh, when we have large author events, this is where we set up. We can do about 50 to 75 chairs in this area. Um, 
And we have uh, weekly board game nights and monthly mm -hmm. chess club. Oh, well, that's nice. Yeah, those are great uh, all-age family programs. What would you say is your biggest challenge as a library director? Oh, um, I would say as a director for the back side of things, you know, communication is always everybody's nemesis. <laughs> um, with a large staff in multiple locations, it's definitely the thing we have to work the hardest at. Uh, from a librarian side of things and perspective of running the library, uh, space is our biggest challenge. Uh, it's what, it's the determining factor in everything we can and cannot do. Okay. Speaking of space, let's take a look at the teen space, then we'll head downstairs. Okay. So. Uh, so our teen space is new. Uh, we just added this this spring, so it's still a work in progress. Um, and we've got some new seating. Uh, after 3 o'clock, we really make it teen only. We are within walking distance of a high school, and we're looking to continue to grow that group of people. Um, we moved the young adult collection up here and out of the children's section to give it room to grow. And um, it's been really successful so far, and we're really excited about it. Okay, let's take a trip downstairs. Okay. So Sarah, now we're on the lower level of the library. Yes, and behind us we have the Friends Book Nook, uh, which is their ongoing book sale. Uh, which every, Tuesday. every Tuesday. Every <laughs> Tuesday, yes. And then down this way? And down this way we have our largest multi-purpose room that we use for story time and um, organizations, I believe it's the uh, They're doing census training in there today. Mm -hmm. Um, and then in, off this way is our admin offices, where we do cataloging, uh, book processing. The behind the scenes work. Payroll, admin, all of that sort of stuff, <laughs> yeah. The paperwork. <laughs> you know, we've had a chance now to s see your whole facility. Uh, you know, as I look at it and I'm, as you kind of go through everything, what do you feel is number one on your wish list? Well, I don't know a single library that wouldn't put money top on the list because it's what makes everything else possible but our our goals moving forward really are to reinvest into the facilities to bring them up to date to get our technology up to date um, those sort of things as you can see we are pretty tight on space around here there's not a lot of room left to move things around and so you know money makes things happen <laughs> <laughs> thanks Sarah appreciate the tour no when we come back We'll go next door to the All Center here at the Morgantown Public Library right after this. Welcome to understood.org, a free online resource for parents of kids with learning and attention issues with personalized recommendations, tools, and expert advice. Back here on Libraries Today where we're visiting the Morgantown Public Library system. Right now we're next door at the All Center. And with me is the All Center Coordinator, Mike McClung. Mike, thanks for being with us. My pleasure. So what exactly is the All Center? The All Center is part of the Morgantown Public Library next door. We're actually built around the core collection of our local history and genealogy section from next door, which we moved over when we acquired the house. And we spent about four years uh, restoring it and uh, making it public friendly. And we brought our collection over. and. Here we are. How long have you been here? Since 2004. We opened in 2004. We got the house in 2000. It took us about four years, and we've been open since 2004. And since then, we've probably uh, at least doubled the collection, maybe more. Uh, well, tell me about the collection. What all do you have in here? Well, we have uh, basic history books, of course, on local and regional history. And uh, we also have a lot of family histories. We have a couple of private collections that uh, one was the result of about 55 years of research and uh, was donated to us. Uh, we have a lot of uh, families that were either local families or families who um, had at some point in time lived here and put down some sort of roots here. Um, this was a region that was highly transitory. People came through on their way west lived here a while. I mean, we've got a lot of local uh, family histories and census reports, marriage records, cemetery readings, district court records. Well, describe for me your typical patron. 
Typical patron is probably somebody who's looking for information on their ancestors uh, going back to the late 1700s. Uh, and they'll have uh, some of them. The average one has some information already, not a lot. We can build on whatever they've got. Uh, we have a lot of resources at hand. We have a couple of really good staff members who have been doing this for quite a while and know all the ins and outs. Uh, and uh, we have a lot of electronic databases we can use, plus our collection. And we can sort of work our way back in time, see how far back we can go. Sometimes we can get them all the way back there. Sometimes not so far. It's, uh, it's, it's always fun, though. Some people have been working for 30 years and still haven't gotten there, but some people come in in one afternoon and they're there. So. What kind of programs do you offer? We do a lot of historical reenactment programs, uh, History Alive, that type of thing. Uh, and we've recently gotten more into music. We just had the classical guitarist Peter Fletcher here. Uh, and we've got a, another acoustic artist coming. And then uh, shortly after this, we have President Theodore Roosevelt will be will be here, yeah, History Alive presentation. And uh, we're expanding programming out. Uh, one of our staff members, uh, Nathan Wurtenberg, has come up with an idea to uh, expand it into historical war gaming. So we're going to be getting into that. That's too, neat. So. Yeah, yeah. What's your relationship with the main library, and how does all that work? Well, uh, like I said, we were originally were upstairs over there. We were basically the second floor uh, local history genealogy collection and now we're over here and uh, they refer a lot of people over to us we refer a lot of people over to them the collections actually interlock very nicely um, we're not totally integrated electronically uh, we have a separate phone system but I mean we share the database everything works out really well and you know worst case scenario old school 40-second trip from here to there, so, you know, it's, it's never a real problem. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate the time. My pleasure. Thanks for coming. We'll have more on libraries today, right after this. Every child is curious. George, look what I found. Turn their curiosity into a lifelong love of learning. Create a curious reader. This is super bedtime reading. Share a book together today. Visit read.gov. A library is a refuge, a community gathering space, a laboratory for the imagination, and a lifeline to the world of information. That's pretty heady stuff. And it takes a lot of work, much of it behind the scenes, to prepare it for the visitors who depend on it for so much. The librarians and staff of libraries, like the Morgantown Public Library, perform their magic every day to make it work. I'd like to thank our guests, Library Director Sarah Palfrey and All Center Coordinator Mike McClung for giving us a tour of the Morgantown Public Library System. I'm your host, Dan Howe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Libraries Today.